Hey there, I'm Elisa Jones, here to teach you the business side of teaching music so that you can secure funding, gain influence, and have more time for what's really important, teaching music. Now, if you're watching this video, it's because you maybe feel like your fundraising efforts have been taking too much time, effort, money, and stress, and you're ready to try another way. Or maybe you think fundraising just is not for you. You feel uncomfortable doing it, asking people for money, running the whole thing. Or maybe you just want to get more out of the fundraising efforts that you've already been doing. So if that sounds like you, then I'm so happy you're here because we're going to make this video a little two-part mini lesson. The first thing we're going to talk about is I'm going to throw you some tactics for fast, easy fundraising that you can implement immediately with very little or no investment of time or money up front. If you don't like to fundraise, this is absolutely for you. And the second mini lesson is going to be where I teach you three ways that you can amplify the effectiveness of fundraisers that you're already doing. So you can make more money with less effort. So whether it's just an online collection like Donors Choose or a huge gala, no matter what size or type your fundraising efforts are, I'm going to give you three ways that you can absolutely get more money when you do those. So if those all sound good to you, then let's get started. Now you've heard the phrase, you can't make money without spending money, right? Well, I think that's only partially true. Um, the first tactics I want you to try are those that give you the biggest return and that yield the highest margin. So here's the, the kind of mind shift I want you to have is you want to spend as little money and as time as possible to make as much money as possible. So that's why grants tend to be such a popular source of funding. It typically costs nothing to apply for a grant, or sometimes you have to have a small cash contribution um, that they'll match or exceed, but you can get thousands of dollars with grants. And that's why donations are so great, because it doesn't cost anything to get them, and it's 100% profit. So a lot of music educators are stuck in this idea of traditional fundraisers, like you host an event like a carnival or a car wash, or you sell stuff like chocolates or candles. But the problem with a lot of these traditional fundraisers is that you have to have some kind of money to get started. You have to buy the chocolates first before you can sell them. You have to work really hard to get orders, and you probably may only get what we call a 100% return. That means you sell $1 worth of candy, a candy bar and you keep 50 cents of it. But what if you sold a $1 candy bar and it only cost you 10 cents? So that means you keep 90 cents of it. That's a much better return. And in business, we call this our margin. So I want you to be thinking constantly, how can I get the biggest return and how can I get the biggest margin? So if you build a web website where you can take donations and it costs you about $200 to build the website, but you end up making $5,000 off of it over the course of a year, that's a much better return than a $1 candy bar is gonna make you. And it's a lot less work. So these are the opportunities I want you to be shifting over to, especially if you hate the aspects of selling and fundraising and run events, okay? So sure, you know, large events can be fun. You can make a lot of money in one shot if you're really smart about it. You keep your costs down, you collect a lot of donations and sponsorships. The sponsors actually end up paying for the event so that everything else kind of um, evens out and you make more money. I've been involved with a lot of these types of events. Um, but if you don't have any budget to get started, then it's kind of a moot point. And if you can't get sponsors who are willing to contribute for those initial costs of the location and the food and the invitations and everything, um, then you really can't spend $5,000 even if you can raise $20,000. You can't if you don't have the money to begin with. Um, so I want you to be thinking of some ideas how you can make micro investments of money or time and create a much larger return. So here are the handful of tactics I want you to try. Ask for donations at your next concert or performance. And this is a hard one because if you pass around a bucket or a, an overturned drum or um, you know, a really huge 
tambourine, um, you can you can get some don cash donations that way, but it's a little bit challenging because you do want to be able to give them some kind of recognition as a donor and some kind of receipt that shows where that money went. So as you are thinking of these ideas, do keep in mind that to be ethically and fiscally sound, you need to be able to record who your donations are coming from and then also provide them with a receipt. Okay, but that's an easy way to do it. You know, ask at a concert, hand out envelopes, and they can send a check in in the envelope. It's really easy, it's totally free. You've already got that captive audience, so it's a great way to start. Um, also, write one grant request as a template and then submit it to several different foundations. You've got um, lots of groups in your community from the Lions Club to, you know, the Templars and there's, there's just so many community groups um, that, that are willing to give out grants anywhere from 200 to I've seen you know $10,000 for projects that align with their, um, their own mission. So write up one grant request, find all of those groups in your community and submit it to all of them, whether it's for new instruments or repairs, these are, these are really typical and they're great funding opportunities for your community and also gets your community involved in your program, okay? You can try setting up an online donation account either through your school, through your district foundation, or through a website like check out GoFundMe and Patreon. And we already talked about Donors Choose. Um, be sure to accept in-kind donations. These can be anything um, like hard goods from a retail store or gift certificates, and you can have an online auction for them, or you can have you know, a live auction for them. You can auction them off on your Facebook page or you know, give them away as prizes. In-kind donations are a fantastic way to get donors involved, and they're very low ask because most businesses would prefer to give you an in-kind donation instead of a cash donation because the items that they give you cost them less, but they can claim they donated the full amount. For example, I could donate to you a bike jersey for you to sell and use the money for your program. It only costs me $15 from my vendor, but it's worth the retail price of $50. So businesses, usually prefer to give in-kind donations. Those are a little bit easier ask than straight up cash, okay? Now, if you haven't already read my blog post on the two types of fundraising and how to know which one would be best for you, I want you to check it out right now and be sure to get the download where I give you a list of resources for passive fundraising. Okay, let's get on to micro lesson, mini lesson number two. And this is how are you gonna amplify the fundraisers that you already have. These are time-tested business tactics that actually come from a lot of the sales training that I do. So the first thing is you want to give more people the opportunity to donate. That means your message is going to get to more people. So the more people who have the opportunity to donate, the more people you'll likely get to donate. In the business world, we call this traffic. Okay? This could mean you get more people to visit your online donation page or attend your fundraiser. So that's the first way, get more people the opportunity. Number two, you get more people who have the opportunity to give. In the business world, we call this conversion. This means that if you ask 1,000 people at your concert to donate to your program, and 100 people do, you have a 10% conversion rate. Now, if you get 200 people to donate out of the 1,000 people, you now have a 20% conversion rate. So the more people you have that give, the higher your conversion rate, the more money you're going to make. Okay? The third tactic for you know, amplifying your fundraising is you get the people who are already giving you money to give you more. This means if those 100 people who gave you only $5, you're going to only get $500. But if each of those has a reason to give you $50, you now have five grand in the bank. So in the business world, we call this an upsell or an increased sell or, um, you know, a larger conversion, okay? So they, they're already going to give you money. You just give them a reason to give more. So how this might look like, let's say you're doing a car wash this weekend, or the people who, you know, you give them the opportunity, you send out the message to more people to come to your car wash, 
And then the second thing is you have more people who do come, they end up giving you more money. And then when you have them there captive as your audience, they're already paying for a car wash. That's when you give them a reason to give a little bit more. Okay. So three great ways to increase your return on your next fundraiser. So quick review, think big margins. You want to invest as little time and money as possible. And with the world and the internet being what it is, you absolutely can invest very little time or money to get a big return. That big margin is what you're looking for. Okay. And number two, be sure to use these three tips to increase your um, traffic, conversions, and upsells at your next fundraiser. Now, what have you tried that's given you the biggest return? What fundraisers do you love to do? I would love to hear about it. So please leave a comment or post it on my Facebook page, and I will see you next time.